while I'm back <coughs> and up in my Discord feed, recently showed up this little bit of a gem, an RV. And I'm not much of an RV person myself, but then I went over to YouTube and I was reminded about Rich Rebuilds and his van life video. I mean, that's not for him. Now, Rich Rebuilds is probably one of the best YouTubers on the platform at the moment. So I thought, why don't I go back to this thing, which I have enjoyed contemplating about for the longest time. Like, what would I do if I made my own van life fan? I'm also dirt poor and also really cheap, so I might be able to afford it, but I'm not even gonna try because I am ch cheap. Anyway, body type, we're gonna get rid of all of these. Yeah, people, these are not vans. These are clearly, uh, I suppose you might call them. They're not really vans, are they? Could have sworn I had more van mods than this, but I suppose this will have to do. I'm gonna go with a big hunk of one like this. We could also look at MPVs. Oh dear, that's gonna be a no from me. So this is our platform. Now, this is probably gonna be something along the lines of your typical Ford Transit or Mercedes van, whatever. The one that's like a bazillion of them out there in the marketplace for companies and ambulances and all that sort of stuff. So this is going to be steel, this is going to be probably a ladder chassis and steel again. A front transverse, because this is going to be the budget line. It's probably going to have a little four banger up the front and it's going to power just the front wheels. And we're going to try to make it something like a diesel. I'm going to go with a double wishbone on the front and then because this is a van, it's probably got a solid axle leaf in the rear to help with that extra weight. In line. Four. Aluminium. Aluminium. And this is probably going to be like a uh, what a 2.4 liter. Yeah, let's go with a 2.4 liter four cylinder. Oh, that's hefty. Oh boy. Push rod engine to keep that RPM low. Aluminium again. Cast, cast, cast. High compression ratio, but not too high because this is going to run a turbo. Cam profile is going to be quite low. Turbocharger bolt bearing. Fuel economy. Injection, direction injection like a diesel. Configuration will be single. And then a standard intake. We're going to run just a regular premium fuel. I don't know. What would a diesel run, basically? The one thing that's really different about Australia is the fact that we have no diesel subsidies. So I don't know how diesel goes in the rest of the world, but diesel here is not actually any cheaper to run. It's probably actually a little bit more expensive to run unless you're carting huge heavy loads around and I'm talking like truck sizes. Not American truck, Australian truck. I know what you were thinking. Now we're gonna wanna lean this out quite a fair bit as well because we want good economy. Now you would normally go with a catalytic converter but because I want to have the chuffing black smoke of a diesel we're gonna go with no catalytic converter and then we're gonna have some baffled to make it extra quiet for that extra comfort. 94 kilowatts is quite a bit for what we're doing. We want more torque than that. I reckon for a four cylinder these are pretty decent numbers. And let's Let's give our new diesel a bit of a license. Ah, oh, the pity patter of a very quiet cutesy wootsy little bit of an engine. And we are going to keep this as very basic as possible. We're probably going to change the color of the intake manifold though to keep it in line with boring old colors. Actually, you know what? This is probably going to have an aluminium color. There we go. And moving on. Now, which one are we going with? That one's a people mover, that one's a van. Now, here's the thing. I am gonna go with the van body, but for modeling and placing purposes, we're gonna have the people mover one, so then we can do this and work easily on the inside. Now, extra body modifications. Stretch that out, oh yeah. Now, can we lift the roof on this one? No, we can't. So what we're gonna have to do is, because the rear end isn't really requiring any of this stuff here, we are going to take out the chassis by clicking on this and we're going to make our own custom bottom end so then we can have it fit nice and tightly in there with everything else. The paint is also going to be a white van. So it's literally a white van man. It's going to be a transverse front wheel drive because we want to keep this quite cheap. It's going to have a regular slush box automatic. It's going to be something like a five speed. Top speed is probably going to be somewhere around 180. No differential shenanigans whatsoever. Radial tires, hard long life. Be uh, no, actually, you know what? They can be quite small. We're going to go with 195s, I reckon. It's See if we can have a uh, mirrored front and rear tires, so then that way you could do tire rotation, which if you're a normal front wheel drive owner, you will know that that is something you can do to help prolong the life of your tires a little bit. Because the front and rear tires wear in different ways. So what you do is when one of them, the, either the front or the rear gets a little bit worn more than the other, you just rotate it. And since these are hard long lives, they're probably 
non-directional. No, they do actually look directional. So you can't switch sides, which is also another thing that you want to do, especially if you're driving the same route every day. Gonna stay with steel wheels to keep the price low, a vented disc on the front. And uh, you know what? This is the delivery vehicle. So we're probably also gonna have vented discs on the rear as well. No one to cladding because cheapness. It's gonna have one seat in the front uh, because usually delivery, bleh, delivery vehicles will have one seat here and then no seat on the other side. So that's what we're gonna go with. It's gonna be a standard, not a basic, but a standard. Hydraulic power steering, ABS and traction control, basic 10 safety. So it probably comes with airbag, progressive springs, gas twin tube, and passive. Go over here and hit utility. All right, we are dealing with a lot of oversteer right now. Also, we can drop this down a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite so tall. So unfortunately we can't go with the mirrored tires front to rear. And this maybe we hit normal or something. Okay, I think that sounds. So now I just tweaked the suspension a little bit. It is very slushy in the back, unfortunately, but we'll just say that it got <laughs> I don't know. Now we do have the mirrored front and rear tires, which is something I wanted. How's our top speed looking? It's looking fairly good. Could we get away with a four speed here? I think we might be able to. A 13 seconds, zero to 100. That is not good numbers, if I'm being honest. Let's go here and drop this RPM down a little bit, since uh, we're not using a whole lot of that anyway. 4,500 RPM is the top RPM. Sounds good to me. We can then actually probably go to the pistons and stuff and drop their quality down without it actually hurting us. There we go. Negative nine quality on the pistons and they survive. All right, I think we're good. Let's move on. That has hurt us a little bit here. So our top speed is 166 kilometers an hour, which is about 100 miles per hour, which if you're running delivery business, you don't really want your people going a whole lot faster than that anyway. We are going to go with the fire speed though. Yep, there you go. That helps us out quite a bit more. Now, the piste resistance, the thing that you guys are here for, the designing of the engine, I'm oh, sorry, of the engine. I was going to say the engine bay because you're going to have to sit around that as well. But also, yeah, like the whole living space. We're going to start with the sitting area though, because that is the part which is going to be standard on the vehicle. All right, we have our seating position. Now, behind the seat, we're going to have the divider. But first, we should probably actually make the floor. So we're going to grab a 3D object and do that. All right. We have a floor. Well, mostly, I just realized that this floor has to come more further back. All right, let's go ahead and put a bed in to start with. Oh, hold on, I probably shouldn't actually put the bed in yet. I should probably put the divider in first. And we'll make the divider out of this. There we go, we have a little bit of a thumb looking like bed with a cloth pillow at the head there. Looks very comfortable. Very narrow. Very long actually maybe. Maybe I could make it a bit shorter. It's very hard to gain uh, gauge scale in this type of experiment. I'd probably sleep in that. All right, let's create a bed base or do we move it all up a little bit? Actually, I think we have to move it up a bit. Now we have to make some sort of brown wood color. All right, we are done with half of the bedroom area. Then the other side, we're going to, to make this so then you can flip the bed up and then this can be a bench and then you can sit over to have a kitchen area on this side. Now, one thing I'm noticing about my body choice, unfortunately, is if you get in through here, you're gonna have to step over the wheel well to get into the back area. So that would have been great if I had a chosen a body where the wheel was up the front and then the doors were behind it. Unfortunately, I don't have that choice. So that means that the side entrance is really gonna have to be the side to end of the entrance to go with. So we're going to create most of a kitchen area here and we're going to have the door just not slide all the way back and then have a bench that'll be vertical that you can lay down uh, and that'll be uh, what we have. But we'll have it in the laid down position for like showing my working out type thing. Now we're going to go with a generic kind of I don't know, 80s bench top style. So we're gonna have a plastic green, I think maybe. Hmm. I don't know if that's the right color bench top, but I think we're gonna go with it and just maybe touched up a bit. Yeah, I think that'll have to do for now. What will it look like in leather? Yeah, I think that works. Now it looks like a textured bench top. I'm just realizing making these cupboard doors. So these are like, uh, these are drawers and they slide out, or these are doors that swing out. And the problem is, is that you can't have it open wider than what it is here. So I can't have it like a really wide door. We're gonna have to have lots of little doors. Nice. Now let's go ahead and put in our sink area. We now have a basin. Yay. 
And now we have taps. So these are very rudimentary taps, so they're kind of like that uh, new hipster stylish type tap where it's like just geometric shapes. Next up in line is to have ourselves a bit of a hot plate. So I grew up with electric hot plates when I was young, but this is more of your camper van type thing. So you're going to run off of gas. Here's the thing though. I don't have any mods for gas. So I'm going to use the fire truck parts and try to make something that looks like a gas thing. So you look at that. It doesn't look like a gas burner. How about now? Now does it look like a gas burner? I think yes. So we've got the big one, we've got the small one, and now we just need some taps. So we can use the other part, which I reckon we could make this look like a tap. Wish it didn't have this little nipple on the end, but I suppose beggars can't be choosers. There we go. We have a two burner stove. I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. That looks very good. Very good, Jehan. I like it, and I like it a lot. So now we have a food prep area slash computer desk area right next to the bed, which will uh, fold up against the side. So then you can use this as a sitting bench area or you can just sit on your bed if you want. We got the washing area, got the cooking area. Then over here, um, maybe this won't be, I'm not sure what this should be because I was actually thinking about having a shower here. So here's my thinking on these sorts of living arrangements. If you're parking near parks a lot of the time, there's going to be public toilets. So toilets are never really going to be a particularly a huge issue. One thing that is going to be an issue though is having showers a lot of the time. But if you're in the city and this is like your like actual living arrangements and you go to work every day, all that sort of stuff, you're probably then going to get a gym membership, which means that you don't need to have a shower. But I'm going to have a shower in this one. So we're going to put a shower in here, but we got all of this extra wasted space here. It could just stay cupboards, but it could also be a toilet. So I'm going to have to think on that one for quite a while too actually because I'm very undecided on what I want to do there. We now have a curtain divider. Makes me feel really safe and at home now. Totes. Well, it seems that uh, my recording broke and you didn't catch any of what I was saying. So we're just going to fast forward through pretty much all of that. So we now have our bin in here. We got, I think we got pretty much everything. Now we would put a cover on here, but to kind of like show all my working, like kind of the high school, they're like, oh, you didn't show your working, therefore you fail. I want to kind of prove that I've actually done this. So I'll, I'm going to leave this with windows for now. And if you want, you could just put curtains up. For, for now, we're just going to put tinted windows on there and hopefully that'll load the job. Now, to the more boring part is to do the outside, which is meh. So if you remember the Mueller trilogy, we're going to go along with the same name as that branding, the Mueller brand, and it's going to be called the Car Go. Yeah, I'm imaginative. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and see how our new off-road vehicle works. Now, I just realized if you're going to be camping a lot in this, you're probably actually going to want something a little bit better than just boring old front wheel drive. We're going to keep it with a cheap automatic though, so that's staying. We're also going to want to have a good RPM. So we see here that there's a notch. What RPM is that? The notch happens at 1700 RPM. So that's where we want 100 kilometers an hour to sit, which is about 62 miles an hour. So 100 is right here. So we're going to need to lengthen out this gear ratio until this reaches all the way across here. Seems that we can't quite do that. Probably going to be somewhere around 2000 RPM, which is not actually what I want. I want this to be a lot better than that. We're also going to put in the option for a manual locker in case the thing gets bogged down a little bit. So this is unfortunate. What is our miles per gallon? 8.2 liters per hundred? You know what's, uh, that's not so bad. The weight is fairly up, but then again, it is a chassis on frame. All right, <laughs> what does the test track reckons it does? So we got a 13.90 to 100. We got nearly 20 seconds on a quarter mile. A quarter in G's are 0 0.8, which is actually, you know what, not horrible. I'm not going to say that's horrible. Our weight distribution is fairly decent, though, when you're going to put a lot more weight on the rear. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, I never did brakes. Ah, yes, there we go. Good thing I came and had a look at this. This is quite bad. 
Also looks like there's very little lift on this car. As you can see here, the traction doesn't go down by much compared to the actual uh, braking force. So I think we're good. Yeah, as you can see here, we're only getting by a hundred, by our top speed, we're only getting four kilograms of lift, which is pretty decent. You ready to go out and see the world? Oh, I think you are. Let's go. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, we never did a test track, did we? Oh, this is going to be bad. So our towing capacity is down, but our load capacity is actually quite high still. So I'm good with that. Just under three minutes minutes. So, you know what? Not a complete nightmare, but also not something that you particularly care for. So let's say you're taking full advantage of the fact that you live in a van and are able to go across country. So one of the things you may want to do is stop at, say, a campsite. So here we are. We have our camper actual van as opposed to what those other things are that they call vans out of, I don't know, convenience or laziness to give it its own name. Or an RV, some people might call it. And we're going to take this now and do a little bit of exploring of the local area. Mostly, we're going to uh, test it on its highway capability out there, or freeway, depending how you want to use nomenclature there. And a little bit of off-roading, and maybe even a little bit of rally, because I'm a fucking idiot. Let's go! So let's uh, bring up the UI so we can see what we got here. We're really digging into the ground there quite a lot. That must be very soft sand. And the engine is very quiet, but that wastegate itself is not very quiet. All right, we're going to come out here. We're going to check both ways. The brakes are not... Ah... Uh, what I would call amazing. <laughs> like, it took a little bit more there to brake than what I thought it would. But we are camping. And we're going to cruise up to our cruising speed of 100 kilometers an hour. And we're going to... Oh, wow, it's actually taking quite a bit to get up to our top speed. Oh, oh, okay, it's the end of the road. Okay, well, that's going to be a problem with our vehicle. But let's test out other things. So, our car parking ability, it's very bouncy, unfortunately. Not a big fan of that, if I'm honest. Oh, boy. That is very... B oh, no. So, hold on. We're going to reverse up. Watch that tail end as I come to a stop. Yep. <laughs> On it. Oh no, that's horrible. Oh, so that's gonna hurt us with like, say, rallying and whatnot. But so far, you know what? As a vehicle, vehicle, it's not horrible. It's a little hard to see over here and be a jet third person, but we're going to go with it as it is. Let's do a little bit of high speed cornering. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nope, understeer. Oh, we've damaged our butte van. What a shame. Well, let's restart it and we're gonna actually, you know what, we're gonna head over and see what its uh, top speed is like. Because I want to know what the RPM is when it actually reaches the speed. Ow. And away we go. I probably should turn cruise control on, but eh, whatever. And we are at our cruising speed. But we're going downhill, so I can't actually tell what it is, because this is a slush box automatic. Which... Here in Australia, not so popular. In America, that seems to be like the favored thing. So under load, the RPM for 100 kilometers an hour is 2000 RPM, which is higher than what I thought it would be, but I suppose we don't really particularly have a choice. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna go upwards the other direction and see how it does there. So, Jayton! Well, you know what? That wasn't quite as amazing as I'd like, so it's going to lose a little bit of score there on its amazing handling characteristics. Oh, wait, it crests. Oh, bugger. I, for some reason, thought it was downhill the entire way last time. I would really like, on flat ground, for this thing to have a really low running RPM. That would be absolutely phenomenal, considering that a lot of van people say that one of the major downsides to actually driving a van is... Oh, God! Ah! Is the fuel economy. So you, you get a van to save money on a whole range of different things. One of which is your living costs. But if your living costs involves a high fuel mileage, it's not going to be particularly what you want. So let's do a little bit of off-roading now. So we're near where the campsite was. We're going to pull a little bit of a handbrakey-brakey. You know, crash all my dishes onto the ground. But they're all going to be plastic, so 
that's fine because <laughs> you want to save money and also be practical about it. Oh, oh, okay. You know what? Not so bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know what? I would drive this thing off-road. It's quite so- Oh, okay. We're gonna flood our house, guys. We're gonna have a wet bed. Ah! Well, let's hope that our bed didn't get <laughs> wet in that. Though you would probably make sure that your living area or living quarters, what would you call it? Anyway, uh, sealed off the elements. So then- God, what's happening? Okay. Yeah, so that's uh oh wait, the campsite's over there? Oh I must Oh don't I go under a bridge? Oh I am so aware of my surroundings and doing so well. Let's do a little bit of downhill and we're gonna turn around and we're gonna do a little bit of uphill. Where is a good downhill part? Oh I see an uphill part over there. Great, let's go do that and see what the thing's traction is like going over more tricky terrain. Oh they're gonna soak up bed again! Ah! Oh my god, it's like I'm a teenager again. I mean, what? I, I didn't wet the bed when I was a teenager. Shut up! Alright, let's go around here. And, uh... Oh, wait, no, here it is. This is the place we wanted. Ooh, handbrakey! Oh god, I, I actually do enjoy handbraking this car. You know what? It's got really good traction. It's got so much weight. And the weight is actually over the front tires. So that is really helping us with the traction uphill. That's pretty decent. Is there any other, like, trickier areas that we could really push this thing to its limits? Oh, this looks like a tricky area. Alright, let's go up and- oh, 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 that was scary. If I was actually carrying speed there, this van would have just completely failed me, and I would have fallen to my death. To my death? No, fallen to the death of itself. So let's do a hill start on the dirt. So we're gonna stop right here without the diff locks on, brake, a little bit of like loading up the torque converter. And I'm giving it like little to no accelerator. This thing is doing rather well. You know, you can actually see the difference in the speed. So when you turn, you're actually losing traction. So you can see here, if I turn, the wheels start spinning a lot faster. That's really cool. Anyway, let's uh, put a little bit more power down. It's not working. We are just getting a lot of wheel spin currently. This is full throttle right now. Oh, you know what it is? Traction control. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Stop, stop, stop! There we go. Oh god, that uh, made me pucker up quite a bit. Alright, traction control is completely off. We're gonna go on and we're gonna do a hill start on this very, very quiet van. Okay, so we're just gonna line up a little bit better I'm right from here. And... Oh, oh. Oh, we don't even need a locker for this part. Yes? Oh, it's good. And it's out of here. Oh, I love it. Look at that! It's so good. Alright, let's see how much better this diff lock is and see if that was actually a thing that was even required at all. Okay, so right here, please. Okay. That is always so just scary backing up downhill on this thing. Alright. Where we go? Oh, a lot of wheel spin. Okay, you know what? It's not really any better. In fact, I think we found the sweet spot of, like, difficulty. And that's about as difficult as that was ever going to be. But you know what? It's doing very well. I am very happy. Let's try some real off-roading. No tracks here whatsoever. Ow! And we're just gonna try to blast our way up here. Oh, no such luck. Oh god, the scraping is real. Diff lock's on this time. We're gonna back up a little bit more to get as much of a run up as possible. Not into the water though. And floor it! Oh, come on, come on, come on. We need to make it up here. Otherwise, front wheel drive van has failed me. Come on, yes, yes! Oh, guys, we have done it. It is proven that this is the ultimate off-road beastmaster. It cares not for bushes. It cares not for dirt. It cares not for going uphill. This thing is built tough. <laughs> I apparently am not. Well, I suppose now it's just a test to see how the safety rating is of this thing. Ah! 
you know what? It's mostly in one piece. That's actually quite surprising. Now, this is pointless, but we are going to... Oh dear. Um... Well, it seems that they haven't fixed the chroming issue. Go in here, select default. Good. Fixed. Let's go! Now all's left to do is to give it its da- I mean, fill score, whilst it does its meandering lap. So getting back into the swing of scores, we're starting with the non-plagiarizing weekend categories. The styling gets a five, it's not really a looker or ugly, it's just in the middle of the road. But maybe don't drive there. The acceleration, however, is well decided. It gets a one. But only because I don't give zeros for scores, so... That's not good. The handling is surprisingly better than what I thought at first though, but it's also not setting records on fire, so it gets a five out of 10. The fun factor is actually quite high as you can actually camp anywhere you want. So it gets an eight out of 10 for its party piece. The cool factor though is divided. Many people think this is cool and stuck up people don't. So it gets about an average five score here out of 10. The trackability though is basically non-existent so it gets a one giving it a total weekend score of 25 only propped up by you know that one party piece i mentioned but moving on to its daily categories it fares a little better though we won't talk about its features every feature you want you have to add yourself so it gets a one out of ten the comfort on the other hand is quite high that bed is also surprisingly really good for your back so it gets a six out of ten along with the Quality 2 getting a 6 out of 10 because it's a very rudimentary vehicle with a strong diesel up front. The practicality is very high though. Have you ever been out somewhere and you shit your pants? Well, go have a shower, get new clothes. Problem fixed. So it gets a 9 out of 10. The value also is quite high. Most houses these days are really expensive or you live in Detroit. So that makes this great value as a house or as a house that you could use to get out of Detroit. So it gets a 10 out of 10. Adding to its great value is the good ongoing costs. Cheap, affordable diesel, cheap tires, but it's let down by a cumbersome locker. I don't know why the idiots back at the factory thought this was a good idea. So it loses a bit of its score. It gets a seven out of 10, giving it a total daily score of 39 which is almost not fair because this isn't just a car it's a place to live and change your pants but we must tally it all up and give it a total fill score and it gets a fill score of 64 out of a possible 120 so it's just a little above average but once again i don't know if that's an entirely fair even playing field but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i did actually enjoy this car and this is something that i've been thinking about for a long time and then i saw ven's post and thought you know what why don't i just do it in automation and save a whole lot of money but yes, thank you for coming back. I am still sick, so I won't be doing things like collaborations or live streams. I will get around to doing that uh, stream where I'll be reviewing your cars. But in videos, I'm able to edit around my coughing, so I don't want to stream right now. But for now, thank you. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.